Hello, my name is Dr. Bob Turcotte, and welcome to the Institute. Come on in, stay a while. So I wonder if you are wondering why we asked you here today. It's a good question. Very bright people. I've asked you to the Institute today to talk about something that's very important and weighs no doubt heavily on the minds of all you young scholars. That is the concept of art theory. Art theory, and its no doubt profound effect on the production of art in a university such as Queen's University at Kingston, where some of the brightest and shiniest minds from all over Canada and the world, you know, the world, who pay quite a good deal of money to come here, study art, art history, art theory, and art theory's influence on the practice, production, of creating the most sacred of objects, the artwork. Okay, we got it. Modernism. Postmodernism. Constructivism. Feminism. Marxism, Expressionism, Classicism, what do they mean? What are these isms? Are they things that art historians and artists and lay people alike have come up with to decide how to categorize, classify, and make sense of the work of these visionaries, these artists? deeper meaning. Perhaps we should end the idle banter and look at a real piece of art. Well, I've got one right behind me. The bold colors, the flagrant disregard for materials. Look, I see acrylic, I see oil. I see more acrylic on top of that oil, and on top of that oil, I see more acrylic and more oil again. Was this particular artist concerned with the aforementioned isms as he created this work? Or did he just create the work and afterwards reflected? Did he even bother to reflect? These are not things that I can simply answer. I've spoken far too much for this portion of our little introduction to the effect of our theory on the production of art. Perhaps now I should send you into one of our spotless and sterile laboratories where we'll speak with one of the brightest young researchers. Maybe he can answer a few of the questions that burn a hole in my heart and in your pocket. Let's go there now. Won't you join me? Hello. My name is Dr. Eric Recherche, and I'd like to welcome you to the pristine labs of the Institute. Here at the Institute, we've been faced with the problem of defining the relationship between art theory and art practice. And in order to bypass the endless convoluted banter surrounding art theory, we have felt the need to turn to the wonderful world of science. Following the format of a scientific experiment, we needed to define a purpose. And so our purpose was to find whether art theoretical concepts presented in art historical academia affect the production of undergraduate artwork at Queen's University at Kingston. Of course, every good scientific experiment needs a hypothesis. Our hypothesis was, let me see here, we feel that art theory has little or no bearing on the production of art at Queen's, and that art theory is a posteriori to art making. Where did I put the uh, parameters of our experiment? There they are.
fire experiment. For this experiment, we will present the uh, art students with a brief survey, a yes or no opinions of course, the results of which we hope will support our hypothesis. The questions in the survey will endeavor to ascertain the students' awareness of art theory and its effect on their work. The controls of our experiment include no less than 50 Queen students polled so as to assure an accurate cross-section of the Queen's art faculty, as well as yes or no questions only. Yes? No. And now, it's time for the conclusions of our survey. In fact, in our conclusion tends to sting a little. The fact that 58% of artists said that adding to the discussion of art theory is a personal motivator to create art disproves our hypothesis that art theory has little or no bearing on the production of art. That there are a few discrepancies. 74% of artists polled said they would be more likely to ponder their art's relevance after their work was done. Which supports our hypothesis that art theory is a posteriori to art practice. Furthermore, 69% of artists said they don't question a contemporary art show's relevance to current art theory. Lastly, 90% of artists polled admitted to reacting to art shows on a purely personal, experiential level, as opposed to an intellectual, art-theoretical level. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and let's go back to the doctor for the final word. The marvels of science, really. Marvelous science, really. What has science done for us? Well, aside from figuring out a way how to put all my vegetables and fruits and minerals and vitamins into this fancy little rainbow jar, or giving me a way to clean out the dirtiest of places in my house with the little duck neck that fits underneath where the germs like to hide. These are two of the things that science has given us and science as well has taught us some valuable lessons here at the Institute regarding art and our theory. Well, initially we found a bit of a fly in our ointment in that we discovered that art artists and the art they created tend to be influenced a little more than we thought by art theory. However, pursuant to our hypothesis, we have found that almost all of them claim that art theory, well that art theory isn't really that important up until the time that the art is already completed, post-production if you will. So what lessons have we learned here? Well, we learned that of course artists do look at art theory. These artists are all people who pay attention. 88% of them say that outside of assigned readings they will read articles, magazines, attend lectures, watch television shows and movies, obtain microfiche from their local library that all speak of art theory. Yet very few of them stated that they accept art theory as the only motivator to create art. All very interesting. All something to think about, really. So, for Dr. Eric Recherche and everyone at the Institute, I'm Dr. Bob, wishing you good art and Godspeed.